you're watching Goodfellas History. I'm one of your hosts, Garrett. I'm Nick. Davis. And for today's topic, um, I want to kind of... This is going to be a little more open-ended. I kind of want to talk about this idea of people at least... Um, when it comes to their justifications as to why they don't hold left-wing values or left-wing positions, they point to the fact that people are mean to them, online specifically. Um, and then also the idea that uh, it kind of in that same vein that people expect more out of Democrats or leftists when it comes to their behavior, and they don't keep that same energy when it comes to conservatives and their behavior. So, yeah. I <laughs> I definitely think there is a double standard. I And again, I'm not trying to defend horrible people online who do consider themselves left-wing, um, because, you know, I in a perfect world, people wouldn't be mean to anybody. Uh, I mean, I do think, obviously, if you're talking about, like, an alt-right, Nazi, racist piece of shit, like, I don't feel bad if you're mean to them, but... That's rude, guys. <laughs> well, I guess I'm rude sometimes. Uh, but I I do think that there are, especially when it comes to online, when you're online instead of face-to-face, I feel like, you know, a lot of times it's just easier to kind of get into that mindset of, like, you're not, you don't have, like, a person, like, in the flesh right in front of you that you have to, like, you know, be careful with, like, your tone and, like, da 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 and, like, all the other uh, things that come with having a conversation. So I feel like it's just easier to be mean online. And, again, I'm not trying to, like, defend that, but when people say oh, so much for the tolerant left, or oh, see, this is why you can't bring people over to your side, because some of you are mean. And I think we can even kind of go back um, to uh, the 2016 kind of, or 2020 election when it came to Bernie and the Bernie bros. Uh, you know, how they were just so mean, and Bernie Sanders didn't do enough to freaking uh, get them under control. And how it was, that's why, like, you shouldn't support him because some of his kind of followers are mean. Kind of just, kind of just that idea. Like, again, so to reiterate, I'm not trying to, like, defend it, but I don't think it's a good justification as to why you don't support, like, healthcare for all, if so, that makes sense. Historically speaking, um, this is just a common tactic that a lot yeah. of people use as a way of diminishing. Um, a candidate and their base um, by basically just making them look like a bunch of rabble rousers. This is nothing new. Uh, um, Andrew Jackson's base was declared a bunch of rabble rousers because it was the first election where everyday people, where everyday men who are white over the age of 21 were able to vote. So let me be real. Let me reiterate that. So like, but it was the largest group of everyday you know common people that were able to vote in an election ever in human history. So, um, hey, there uh, you go. And they, they, the, the party that happened in the White House afterwards was talked about at great length by uh, the the established uh, news outlets in Washington D.C. as basically just as a hillbilly, you know, freak out inside the White House, a bunch of hayseeds running around, uh, muddying up the carpets. I mean, and and using the the uh, furniture as you know, like utensils and how they how they eat and turning chairs into toothpicks and all sorts of you know other caricatures um but this is a common tactic um out on top of it garrett uh, the reason why uh there there is this double standard for the left and the uh liberals when it comes to this kind of behavior has a lot to do with the fact that um the right wing has adopted a very aristocratic they're the aristocratic party. They represent the aristocratic element within our society, and so therefore, bad manners are a uh, aristocratic. Yeah. yeah, and and there's something I actually wanted to jump in on that as well, because part of the double standard I feel, especially when you're online, kind of comes from the left wing circles themselves. We tend to hold ourselves to a higher standard a lot of the time, and left wing yeah. politics typically are going to be more empathy based. Like, our policies are more for, like, how do we help not just the individual, but, like, society as a whole. How do we build up this as a whole and whatnot? So when you see thing kind of, things kind of outside of that norm or things that seem, like, aggressive towards one group of people, 
you want to kind of cast that out if that makes sense. And so I think yeah. a lot of it is something we bring on ourselves, which... I think a lot of it also yeah. is the fact that the left just lacks a lot of discipline. I mean, like, there's a lot of things that I see online that I would like to, like, just jump in on and, like, rant and rave. But I don't because it's, A, for the most part, meaningless. So I'm not going to be able to change too many people's views. Um, and, B, it it's the wrong forum for that kind of discussion. Like, yeah. the way I, I see it is that Twitter and, and all these uh, outlets are kind of like the id of the American psyche. And so a lot of these, a lot of, a lot of the left-wing voices that you see that say some pretty mean shit and some pretty deplorable s- stuff probably are very well-meaning. It's just, it's a, an emotional response to something that probably requires just a little bit more uh, analysis on their part. And I think also, it, what was also unfair about it is that a lot of the people that participate in this, I mean, are probably younger and they don't, they don't have as much life experience um, and so they are more passionate about the issue and they just kind of lack that natural discipline um, that you get with age um, to rein it in a little bit because to them I mean if, 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 if like for them defund the police is not just about you know social justice it's also about stopping you know you know, these brutal, really brutal deaths of, of black men and women in this country from happening. And to them, anybody who's against that is, is insane because, like, I mean, look what's happening. It's right in front of you yeah. for, without really realizing that there is a lot of media bias that exists in our society. And most people aren't exposed to, to these facts. Most people, most people get their news from um, traditional outlets or they get it from Facebook. And that's 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 a coin flip if there ever was one because either it's you know something that's really in your side or it's the exact opposite, and so I mean it it, it just gets back to my point about institutional bias. Yeah. Institutionally speaking, most established groups um, are going to be against reform, and the left wing is about constant reform. So it, they're kind of the antithesis to us. I mean, in, in well, and not just that, but conservatives a lot of the time are based more on the individual as well, mm-hmm. like kind of the pull yourselves up by your bootstrap. So, and I feel like lefties in general, like we look at more statistical side of things, like we look at statistics dealing with the amount of uh, African Americans killed by police every year and whatnot. So I feel like the reason BLM got a better traction was after George Floyd was because it was an individual story. It was something that conservatives could empathize with more well, and it was like clear in, in your face on this is happening well i think also yeah. it's just the sheer brutality mm-hmm. like guys i this dude was choking the life out of this man for about 10 minutes this was a lynching like like uh, you know there this triggered something in the psyche of a lot of centrist Americans who thought we were past this kind of behavior. And unfortunately, the Democratic Party was too scared to kind of embrace that. Because let's really be honest here. That, that was, it, not only was this an incredibly cruel way um, to kill a person, I mean, like, it, it, it floored, it flabbergasted everyone. To the point where even his own, even this guy, this Shavana characters, even his own police department was not willing to defend him because just how outrageous this was. And I mean, what we're beginning to see, I think, is that the double standard towards conservative behavior is beginning to be diminished because Steven Crowder did a mock version of this and was basically banned for doing it. Mm hmm. I mean, no that's actually was, what I was about to bring up. Is I was like, and then like on the flip side, is every time it was referenced, it usually on the conservative side, we usually let the people being banned. So the the reality, the reality is that it's, I think the double standard is beginning to lax, and so the real question is how how can we use this to our advantage? I mean, and let's also add on top of the fact that most people who say that I would be a leftist, but there was somebody who was mean to me online, so therefore I'm not going to be a leftist probably don't care too much about the issues mm-hmm. yeah it's i mean an it's an excuse to to dodge you know to dodge the issue 
or to not really get into the nitty gritty of why they're against an issue. And, and that, once again, could fall into multiple different categories. I mean, most people just don't care. Most people don't know. Most people are not aware of that. And I think that's one of the things that's really frustrating for me, that left-wing people kind of lose the forest to the trees. And it's, 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 a, it's, it's a type of bias. It's a confirmation bias. So all of us are more aware, like all of us in, right here, the three of us, and the people watching the show are more aware of, of activities, of history, of political action, all these things, than your lay American. And it's not because these people are stupid. It's just that like this is not it's not as much of a part of life as they are interested in. So they're not interested in going out and doing the extra step and going further into it because I mean it really doesn't affect their life. The reason why the George Floyd incident changed that is that this was just an incredibly brutal flipping event that it caught everyone off guard even conservatives really didn't have a talking point for this because this was just right out of right field and so when 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 discussing these issues i mean we need to we need to be we need to understand that a hammer really isn't the best tool for dealing with this more of a scalpel you know, we need we need to be precise. We need to point out facts and statistics that are uh, strategically placed to talk about these issues. And this is a perfect example of where critical race theory comes into play. Like, I can't imagine uh, this guy thinking that he could get away choking out a white person like he did George Floyd. And the outrage would have been like just as just as severe, if not more so. As it a result. probably would have been more so, yeah. But it would have been more localized. The reason why this became nationalized is because of the BLM movement. And i got to give credit to the BLM. They did that. They handled this strategically well. Unfortunately, the, the Democratic Party distanced themselves from it. And the right wing was able to change the narrative a few months in to, you know, the, the crazy BLM and, and all that jazz. But... But to really be honest here, I mean, like this was this was an incredibly brutal moment, and I'm hoping that this is a turning point because I mean we already discussed policing in this country and how it needs to be reformed, but I mean the, the institutional biases that exist in media and in our culture um, make that incredibly difficult because any kind of rational argument for police reform are immediately dis, uh, discounted um, by the by the by the establishment because they have it all figured out. Yeah, I'm on two minds of that one. I, I do feel that, like, parts of it did get, like, the conservative base riled up and whatnot, but I also feel like conservatives still tried to weaponize a lot of the George Floyd incidents, oh. like the fentanyl in the system and whatnot. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, that, 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 of course, happened. I mean, like, the reality is that they eventually found talking points, and mm -hmm. they, they, it's, it's like, um, they're like ticks, right? So, initially, they don't take a lot of blood, but then they come this big bloated thing on you, unless you get it off of you. And that's conservatives. I mean, they just, they just latch onto you, man. And they latch onto an issue, and it's very small, but then they try to expouse on it. And then that's when they get into the conspiratorial range of the fentanyl and all that fun jazz. Oh, oh, there's a lethal dose of fentanyl. What's a lethal dose of fentanyl? Who said it was a lethal dose of fentanyl? Oh, it was a private, private, not the state, a private courier, uh, uh, coroner hired by the, uh, by the Brett Kavanaugh team to inspect the, uh, the corpse. And they were able to deduce... That there was a, a a lethal dose of fentanyl. So yeah, that that's that. What a surprise! So I mean, it, but it but they leave that out, and once again, we got to realize that the lay person who is on the street doesn't know that they're just hearing that. Yeah. And since a large portion of the right wing gets its media or gets its 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 news from Facebook, that's the narrative they're going to run with. Fun fact, though, is that their percentage of their overall people believing their crap diminished yeah, as a result of this. That's true. So that's the thing. I mean, it, it, this it, once again, the right wing can't help itself because it's like a whirving dervish. They're just all over the place. And they do, they, 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 they go at something very disciplined 
but over time it gets crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier until it's just all over the place and that's what happened with the george floyd at first it was just disciplined oh this is a horrible thing how can anybody just do this to somebody but this doesn't prove that there's institutional racism this is just one bad apple we got to take care of this and then eventually turned into oh there was a lethal dose of fentanyl and this guy and actually you know let's let's actually try this out let's have a person you know sit on my neck for multiple minutes to see if this happens and of course you're not gonna let somebody do that to your neck because that'll kill you yeah like even well, having Stephen a crowd case he was literally just on his back yeah <laughs> like even if, even if you're like i was trained in the police academy that there are spots that you place your knee that will not disrupt airways breathing but will allow you to keep the person pinned to the ground and yeah no that's not putting your knee on somebody's neck wasn't that this was this was a clear case of it i don't know what was going through that man's mind when he was doing this so i mean i think that at the end of the day um the right feeds its own bs and we are now living in a more openly racist period in our country's history than we've seen in a long time. Now, is it more racist than it's been? No. But it is openly racist now. The mask has fallen off. And so now the left needs to decide how it's going to want to handle this. And I think that I think that if the left is smart, they'll follow the lead of BLM because they seem to have their shit figured out. Like, as much negative attention goes to BLM, this is a very disciplined, coordinated group. They're very determined. They're very well organized. So my hat's off to them. I, 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 really, I really give them all my support, and I really hope that they're able to really gain the political momentum necessary to move forward as a political movement. Well, what I like about BLM as well is that they know how to sort of weaponize, like, public support very like effectively like they know they really emphasize people like filming every encounter anything like where people are sticking out and doing something that they don't actually agree with mm -hmm. like people will film it it's yeah. constantly filmed i will i love that about mm -hmm. them yeah i think that that's that's definitely something that's it's also changing the narrative online so garrett i mean like what, you, what you're dealing with right now with the whole uh tolerant oh so much for the tolerant left I mean, yeah. I, 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 that's that, that's my entire college experience, in a nutshell. It's the same shit. Um, yeah. Like, you get that conservative dude that would spout off bullshit, and then you you yell at him, and it's like, oh, well, so much for the tolerant left, and it's like, what does this have to do with tolerance? Yeah. Like, I, I here's the thing. tolerance does not mean acceptance, so I don't have to accept your bullshit. It just yeah. means that I don't want to kick you off campus because yeah, I can tolerate your existence. That's what tolerance means. It's about, you know, it's about understanding that, you know, you don't have to like the person, you don't have to agree with the person, but there's no reason for them not to be there. I mean, like, but that, that's the thing, but that, that's the key thing. So, like, no, the left doesn't need to be tolerant, and in my opinion, we just need to be a little more disciplined on how we say things, but, like, at the end of the day, I really don't care um, if there's mean people online, because there's always going to be mean people online. Well... Yeah, and I mean, when you are on Twitter and you see somebody like I don't know, like new Master sixty nine being like, oh, you know, being mean to conservatives. I mean, number one, like, it, it's it's just the anonymity is there, and so I just don't know why. And again, I know it's a very like on the surface like excuse to just not, you know, uh, be open to like left wing ideas, but you know, it's. Uh, it's like a minority of people who are like that. Oh, yeah. That. Just, trolls be trolls. Yeah, and there's trolls on my, like, again, this, like, 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 who knows if people this oftentimes will, shit about anything. Yeah, and people will oftentimes just say things literally to get a reaction. Yeah, like, they, there's, the people, people, there are always people who are going to stir the shit. That's, that's just the way things go. I mean, yeah. and, 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 and the, to add on top of that, like, the, you know, the thing is that I've heard really mean things being said by conservatives. Like yeah. really mean things, like you know. There's, there's they th usually they usually actually say things where it's like woof eyebrow raising. So why are and what I always tell us people why are you okay with them saying that and not okay with that? And it gets to well I expect that from them. Wait 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 wait. 
Wait, so you're dehumanizing the left, is what you're telling me. Yeah. You're removing the human element from them for some reason. Now, that's, that's disconcerting, because you are basically saying, well, people be people when it comes to the right wing, but you're not willing to do that to the left wing? Yeah. That's, that's maybe, pretty strange. Maybe the right wing at least seems more accepting, like, at first. Oh, and, they're not too. It's, and this like, this almost gets back to as I, what I was talking about earlier, though, because I feel like the left themselves kind of hold them like we hold ourselves to that standard, though. That's part of the problem is that we are with the party that screams decorum politics very often. Well, I would I'm, I mean, I, I don't think I can I can solve the problem of the left yeah. wing. I would say that um, if you have a stick up your ass, pull it out. Well, and I, I also think it goes back to the whole, like, because I feel like, you know, people use the term, like, leftist or liberal or Democrat, like, interchangeably. Very and liberally. So I know that some, yeah. And so I know that some people, they'll say, like, well, of course, um, you have people in rural communities, like, leading conservative because you have, like, Democrat, liberal people in New York, like, wagging their finger in their face. And it's like, okay, I, and then they're like, of course, they're not going to go left. And it's like, well, I mean, Why? it's not really, but it's not all the same. I think that's part of the issue, too. I mean, well, it, well, you're, kind of have like. Where you're getting at is kind of what I'm going to talk about later in the show. Yeah. Is this a stereotype? Yeah. We're from right wing podunk state, okay? How many, how many, like, how many, you know, Bible thump and rednecks that drive around with a Confederate flag and a bunch of rifles in the back of their truck do you know? I mean, I'll no, say like three. <laughs> like, not many, right? This, this is a stereotype, right? You go out into the boonies, like, most of the people there are friendly. They're, 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 they're set in their ways, but they're friendly. I mean, but once again, like, these people, they don't care. Like, like, do you think a farmer really gives a shit about what some guy in New York says about him? Nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, when 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 people talk about being offended by them New York types, it's basically other urban people who are trying to stir. It's it's just stirring shit. It's 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 uh, WWE politics is what I say. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, those people in New York. Well, welcome to L.A. L.A. is this. Ooh. And in reality, I mean, in, in, in reality, at the end of the day, I I am not concerned if people in New York City are woke scolds because guess what? There are always going to be woke scolds in metropolitan areas. Just like there were, there were moralists back in the day um, that would wag their fingers at the drunk Irish. Like, look at all these drunk Irish running around being drunk and drinking and going to their Catholic parishes. I mean, how dare they? I mean, it's the same shit. Um, the problem is, is I don't think that's as much of a systemic issue as some people try to make it out to be. Like, it's clearly yeah. not. Like, the, the, the problem that's facing a lot of these red states is not New York, you know, people... Most of whom are working class people of color, you know, wagging their fingers in people's faces. It's once yeah. again, um, it's a wedge issue that makes no sense. Yeah, people from Wall Street think that they're better than everybody. What else is new? Yeah. Um, we already knew that. <laughs> yeah. Like, what else is new? Like, the, oh, they go to Martha's Vineyard. Okay, whoop de doo What else? Like, this is something that's been around for a long flipping time. Guess what? We have elites in our society, and those elites don't have a high opinion of everybody else. So they create stereotypes. Well, yeah. There's a stereotype. I mean, let's think about this. There's a stereotypical meathead New York worker, right? That, you know, a cross between Tony Soprano and Archie Bunker. You know? Mm. Like, that. these are stereotypes. It's stere It's just being a st it's stereotypes. It's, yeah, it's like us versus them trying to paint this, like, very simple, yeah. like, you're yeah. like this, they're like that. And it's also like, I mean, what do you, what do you want done about it? Like, yeah. us to just get rid of like people with their noses stuck in the air. I mean, the yeah. people like they're always going to be around. Like and we, so, like we even have that in, in in this state where like the north end of, of Salt Lake is like the upper preppy part of town, and the further west and south you go, not not so nice. At least until you get to like, at least until you get to like the the Cottonwood part. 
And so yeah. once again, like it's like okay that that these are stereotypes, right? Most yes. most of the people who turn their noses up at other people, um, that aristocratic hootiness, I mean, haughtiness. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that, that, a that's not going to go away because that's human behavior. Like, there's always going to be there's always going to be that person, even if they're like from a podunk trailer, you know, they're they're always going to think that they're better than everybody else, and there, there's reasons for that. There's psychological reasons for that. There's sociological reasons for that. But that's not going to change. Um, the real thing we need to do as leftists is figure out how we can take um, real issues and kind of ignore. Um, the the traps the landmines that the right wing is going to throw at us so that we can move forward because they're just distractions it's designed to distract energy away from the real issue and, like, and that's actually something i want to touch upon well because i as well because i feel like the right has really learned how to weaponize a lot of like the the empathy based side of our politics there in that like any time an issue comes up they will turn it into the most like humanist side of an aspect that they can so that the left just gets caught in the wheels on that and just turns and turns and turns over it. Mm -hmm. When it, It's just, it, like, a good example of this is, like, you know, there are more white people that get shot by police than black people. That's a good example of it. Because it's true. There are more there are more white people that get, get shot and killed by police than there are black people. That's not the issue, though. And the issue is that we have to get into the statistics now. Proportionally speaking, speaking more black people are shot per population than white people. And now the issue, yep. the issue, I would say, is a step further than that. The issue is how many of them are unarmed. Yeah. Like if you're armed shooting at cops, you're, it's not going to look great for you in the long like, run. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Like I, at that point, you know, yeah. even if you weren't doing anything that like that wasn't really that crazy, like you're like doing a drug deal. Okay, I don't care. But, but, if you start shooting, or you show threat of intent to harm, I'm sorry, you're outgunned. You're, you're escalating force at that point, yep. But, well, maybe if, I mean, obviously it's, like, you know, uh, case by case, but maybe if you're, you know, a younger person with a toy gun. Yeah, that, you know, but that's, know, that's, I, that's, a, that's a perfect example, though. That's a yeah. example of, of, of bring it up, so... Way a talking point. What you just brought up, Garrett, is called a talking point. And disciplined people would bring that up. But let's talk about Tamir Rice. You know, this was a 13-year-old kid that had a toy gun that was shot and killed by cops within, what, within five seconds of the police showing up, shot and killed him. Like, yeah, like. What, what's your answer to that? Now that's a little bit of a whataboutism, but once again, you're bringing up a talking point. So using that talking point in congruence with your argument of well, there's a disproportionate number of black men per population that are shot and killed by police in comparison, and you know, let's talk about Tamir Rice. This is a perfect example of it. That reinforces your argument. Most people yeah. don't do that, and a you're not going to do this in a Twitter fight because it's just it's all over the place. It's not really set up to be like that exactly yeah. and so this is what that in 150 characters yeah, yeah exactly exactly so one one thing that i would say is that when when people make that argument to you and i get this we get this all the time oh well you know there's just so many people that are mean online i'm like are, are you surprised by that i mean yeah it's it's online i don't so like, let's talk about the issues why, why, why do you think they might be mad about this and let's also add that in. Like, why do you think they might be mad about this? Why do you think they might be angry about this? Why do you think they might be really emotional about this? Do you think this is a really serious issue? And then, I, then you can then you can begin the conversation that way. It's like, okay, do you think this is serious? You I mean, do you think they might take this really seriously? I mean, you know, bringing up Trayvon Martin, uh, Tamir Rice, um, what was the name of the man that was killed in New York that couldn't breathe? I forgot his name. Um, sure, I'm talking uh, about George Floyd, oh, yeah. Gary, uh, what was his name? Uh, Gardner? Eric Gardner? Eric Gardner. He was the one that was uh, that very similarly um, mm -hmm. couldn't breathe because a, he was in a chokehold. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and 
the guy was on his back. Like, once again, Jesus Christ. Literally squeezing yeah. life out of the man's life. Uh, you know, literally squeezing life out of the man. Mm-hmm. Um, like, this this is pretty serious shit, right? So you think yeah. that people might get a little passionate about that? Seeing, yeah, seeing... especially... Sorry. Uh, but, like, especially if you're, like, you know, a person of color, I mean... You know, so, maybe you don't, you can't see that online if, you know, depending on how anonymous they are, but, yeah, so, you know, if you're just going to point and say, oh, they're very mean and they're, they're not allowing like civil discourse, but maybe they have a family member who was murdered by police. Like, I think that's part of it too. I don't think it's just people being fucking mean. Well, there's trolls be mean, I, they have emotion. Sorry. There's, there's, trolls yeah. be trolls. But once again, you bring up the point, you're dehumanizing the left at that point. Yeah. Why? Why is it okay for right wingers to shriek and, and and do all sorts of insane and say all sorts of insane shit about abortion, but you talk about you know this and then you're crying about civil discourse? Well, yeah, you like, know, like what what like do, you understand the absurdity of that, right? Oh, you're not being civil about you know talking about you know kids getting shot by cops. How dare you? It yeah. just brings up the absurdity of it. I mean, this is absurd, double standard, and bring that up. Constantly bring that up. Constantly, anybody who's watching this, constantly bring up the fact that you're dehumanizing the left when you do that. And what you're, and the, the consequence of that is that you're not al- allowing natural human response of anger and frustration to take place in the discourse. And yeah, you know there there are there are there are trolls and dipshits that are gonna try to play along with this and and, and stir the pot. There always will be pot stirrers. That's not the issue. The issues are the issues. So that that's that's at least what I take from it. I mean, yeah, yeah get, I agree. Like, I mean, it also helps though that we don't. If we have to, we can actually stay to the emotionless like logic so logical side as well because most of the statistics back us up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely, I definitely think having, because like having civil discourse, like I obviously am not like against that, mm-hmm. but I mean, there's been just me personally, there's been times I've wanted to like scream on people, scream at people online, like when it comes to COVID. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, when so, people are dying, like how far are we just going to be like, oh, it's civil, it's civil, thank God. And like when, you know, that happens, they like praise it to like, you know, the so, high heavens, like, oh, thank God, this is what America should be while there's, like, hundreds of thousands of us dying to COVID. So, the right wing is a lot better at covering each other's asses. Yeah. As well. True. They're extremely organized that way. Well, it's not a matter of organization, it's a matter of mindset. So, it's us versus them. And they know who they are. So, they, they if they see a conservative um, saying something really fucking stupid, they're going to back it up. Because it's yeah. it's it's about preserving, and that's that discipline. Mm-hmm. So what the left needs to do is not, oh, you know, this person's one hundred percent right, saying that all cops are racist. You know, what they need to say is like, okay, this is systemic racism. All police departments are dealing with systemic racism. Yeah. Just assert it. We know this is true. The facts back us up. Don't be worried about being called out. And that's the thing that I tell people. And that's what I tell you guys. That's why I, I want to tell left-wingers. Don't be afraid about getting called out. Stand by your guns. You know, we are dealing with a real big problem in this country. And it's not going to get solved on its own. Standing by your, stand by your guns. And, and push back. As you get called yeah. mean for doing that, I don't care. I Wear it as a badge of honor. Because, yeah. I mean, like, it, it, if rocking the boat means that you are seen as a mean person, then it's worth it. Yeah. Because what's the alternative? And, yeah. Yeah, and the alternative is nothing gets done. Yeah, and understand what's, you know, important to you and the reasons you have, you know, the positions that you do. And if people are mean to you because you're not the type of leftist they want you to be or they're not... Like, there, I don't know, a myriad of different reasons. I mean, don't let that be at least, like, the sole factor of, like, oh, well, then I guess I'm just going to go to the right, or I guess I'm on the wrong side, or, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, because, again, let's, 
I think health care is a right and everyone should have it. If I don't know, some leftist or who someone who claims to be a leftist, like went on Twitter and like, you know, ripped me a new one for some reason, like that's not like da 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 like because they think differently. I wouldn't just be like, Wow, the left is mean, I'm gonna just not hold this view anymore. I think at the end of the day, just look at the issues and mm-hmm you know, look at the evidence, look at the facts, look at what, you know, people, like, I do think it is important to see what people are saying about it and, like, getting perspectives, but don't, like, when it comes to attitudes and, like, you know, being civil, I don't think that should be really, I don't think that should have any real, like, credence into how people, like, choose a side. What's the nicest side? Like, it makes no sense to me. Yeah, no. Well... (laughs) Well, generally, if you look at the conservative conservative long term goals, anyways, they're usually not the nicer side. Yeah. yeah, they are. But we, you know, they keep getting the benefit of the doubt, and it's like, I mean, if you're going to give conservatives the benefit of the doubt, oh, they're joking. They didn't mean it like that. Oh, they're and just like, kidding. Maybe, maybe extend that. I mean, you probably won't if you're somebody like that. But you know, maybe extend the same courtesy to someone. Like, on the left wing, oh, maybe they were having a bad day. Maybe they've been personally affected. Like, like I just don't, I feel like, like, people who identify with the left on Twitter, like, don't, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to defend shitty people, but I feel like they don't get the benefit of the doubt as much as conservatives mm-hmm. do, and I just, that's yeah, just how well, I, there's shitty I people all around. So, I mean, there's nothing yeah. we can do about it. Yeah, well, guys, so. got any closing arguments? I just think that we should probably have some more unified talking points as well and stand by them because they're going to help you out in the long run. You're not going to get lost in the sauce of like random little debates or you're not going to be able to hold your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, don't. I know we're on social media a lot, but I would. Don't let that be like the one avenue that you go to to get your political information. I I would branch out like don't listen to new Master sixty nine on anything with like a freaking I don't know like furry profile picture. Jimmy Dore. You know. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, like just tr- try to try to branch out a little bit more. Again, I go I'm on Twitter a lot. I'm on like Reddit a lot. I think it's fun, but you mm-hmm. know I I don't just get a whole one hundred percent of the perspectives I see aren't just from there. So I would just branch out a little bit and like, you know, yeah. I would say, uh, hold your own. Cause I mean, this is a fight and every single time you go into the arena, you gotta be ready to fight. I mean, it's just the way things go. Um, have facts and logic at your side, but don't be afraid to, to, to use talking points. I mean, I think the talking points sometimes get stigmatized cause it sounds like you're trying to, uh, manipulate people but they're just talking points. They're arguments. They're 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 and they are ammunition for our arsenal to persuade people to change their minds or to change their opinions about things. So, mm-hmm. agreed. Yeah, I think that's well said. Mm-hmm. So this has been Goodfellas history. If you like what you heard here, please like, subscribe, and share, and comment down below. And have a wonderful day. See you guys.